Hey guys, this is Bear Gaming and welcome back to our channel. For today's video, we are going to have another Hero Spotlight and this time we are going to discuss about Talia. Over here, in the journals button, just press this one and then press Heroes. So since she is a Faded Grade Hero, she's somewhere over here. Just scroll down and you can see this, looks like the end this is Talia. And first, we are going to check out her skill set. Her passive is Twisted Causality. Heals one ally for 50% of own maximum health when, an when that ally's health falls to 50% or below after receiving damage one time per battle. So that's per battle, not per turn. Now, for the first skill, Judge's Hand. Deals 150% damage to one enemy and 50% chance to decrease attack of target by 15, uh, 18% for 6 turns. Then, the second skill, Summon Golem, deals 127% damage to all enemies and heals all allies by 24% of own max health when attacking. So that's her skill set. Now we are going to take a closer look. This is Talia, and you can see there are stones. She's floating. And you know, whenever I see Talia, she reminds me of those Mayan. And I don't know what's exactly the term, but that's all I can remember. The Mayan is it drive? I guess or those I really forgot the term <laughs> sorry about that so first we are going to check out the appearance effect I feel evil energy prophet and fortune teller of Brun Talia then the illustration and then this is the default mode and this is the battle mode <laughs> you can clearly see the rocks form into a hand. Then for the skill preview, this is the basic attack. You can see the rock forms into a hand and there's something shooting. Like light. Then for the first skill. And then the second skill. Is full of sorrow. So that's the rock. It's like she's controlling the rock. Guys, if you hear any background noises, I'm sorry about that. Oh wait, I think I just exited. And let's check out the hero story. So. Cleric, Talia, sex is female, nation is Brun. Hero tier, Fated, or Fated Grade Hero. Element is Nature, she's 18 years old. Race is Human, position is Support, or Support Type Hero. Birthday is on March 15. So originally, she's from Brun. And let's check out the story. A fortune teller from Brun and friend of Iris. A girl with a mysterious air, with brown hair and red eyes. Perhaps because she is able to see things that others can't. She is always relaxed and doesn't dwell on things before her. She spontaneously wanders from place to place and even crosses the border as she pleases to hostile nations such as Norborn Frosty from Brun. Her first encounter with Iris was in a line of traffic people where Iris was kidnapped by Baron Malov. No one believed Talia when she said that she was a fortune teller from Brun because no one thought it made sense for a fortune teller to be caught in the middle of a line of people being trafficked by an enemy country. However, her words turned out to be true when Brun's patriarch invaded the territory of Nordbond Frosty, an enemy nation, and attacked the traffickers to save Talia. She then accompanied Iris to a group of people heading to Brun's capital while teaching magic and witchcraft. 
What's more, when Iris was in jail, Talia helped her to escape and inform her of the power of the ancient dragon clan. Only Talia Helser herself knows the reason why she is helping Iris, who is a complete stranger. Hmm, that's a mysterious story. So, now that we found that out, I also wonder, why is Talia helping Iris? Maybe she knows something or maybe she could see something. So that's the background story of Talia. We can see her over here. She looks like a little kid. And based on her looks here, it looks like she's younger than 18 years old. So now we are going to check out her fate core. I think she only has one fate core. So over here in the fate course button, we are just going to look for Blooming Someday Fate Course team. So she's under here. And under the Blooming Someday or Time Walker Fate Core team, you can see two gold Fate Cores. One is Shell and the other one is Talia. And you can see the blue Fate Core Rera and the rest are black Fate Cores. If I press... Away. <laughs> so this is Talia. And if you notice by now, uh, the Time Walker or Blooming Someday Paper Team. It's like those kids, uh, the character who are kids in Exos Heroes. In this team, they are all grown up. So one of them is Talia and you can see she no longer looks like a kid, but instead she looks like a grown woman. Prophet of the Sun Talia. Talia in the parallel world of a new timeline. For her, who believed everything was according to Providence, growth was an was the providence of nature. Once a fresh sprout, she has grown to become filled with fresh ver verdure. Verdure? What's verdure? I haven't thought of researching about that. Well, I'm just going to check that out. So, we are going to check out her passive. The Twisted Casualty now has additional passive, which is first, Dimensional Leap. Or Dimension Leap increases own dodge by 20% and attack by 1000. Upon receiving damage, removes all buffs from this skill upon dodging successfully. Stacks up to 4 times. So this is the special passive of the Time Walker or Blooming Someday Paper team. And Divine Him increases maximum health of all allies equipped with a Time Walker team paper by 5%. So this is the special passive of the gold paper itself. Of Talia only. Because with Shell, she has another one, the gold paper passive which is a pole. Increases dodge of allies equipped with the Time Walker Faker team and you can see the heroes under here. So for Talia, she increases the maximum health. So for Dimensional Leap, it says here increases own dodge and attack and then, well, it increases own dodge and attack upon receiving damage and then removes all buffs from this skill upon dodging successfully so let's say upon damage she receives dodge and attack so this two will be increased and then the next time she receives damage and if ever she dodge successfully this two here is going to be removed and it can stop up four times so in case she receives damage four times and she doesn't dodge this 20% and 1000 will stack up to four times so it's like 20% times four that's 80% right <laughs> and then attack will be 4000 as long as she doesn't dodge but if she dodge successfully this boss will be removed so this is how i understand passive for the first and second skill it's just the same there's no additional info or skills to it now we are going to take a closer look at Tanya. so this is she and you can see the hand is still there but instead there is a glowing red light some lightning you can see, she definitely looks like a Mayan god. Did you know those? I really forgot if... You know, if ever you watch other movies and other games, there's this 
Mayan Temple. And I just forgot where it's located. <laughs> Too bad. Before I used to say it all the time, maybe if you happen to play Tomb Raider, you know, Lara Croft, she often travels to different places and there's this exact place where in she goes to a certain Mayan temple and I really forgot the term. <laughs> Sorry about that. So this is she. You can see there's this halo-like thing. It really looks nice. She looks like a saint. <laughs> Appearance effect. Prophet of the Sun. That's really nice. And then her illustration, you can see it there. And then this is the default mode, and this is the battle mode. It's like she's about to dance. <laughs> and for the exclusive equipment, you can see the stone like hand is now turned into this green jewel. It really looks nice, and I wish I have that. We are going to check the exclusive equipment. You can see Arm of Ancient Spirit. And if you have this, Talia's attack will be increased to 30 and combat power by 10,000. Now I see this 30. It should be 30%, right? Because 30 is so small compared to her um, additional buff whenever she receives damage. Her attack will be increased to 1,000 and that stacks up to 4 times. So that's 4,000 all in all. And then you can just see this 30. I think they should be changing this one later on. It should be 30%. You know, since uh, getting the exclusive equipment costs too much, like for this one, it costs about 20,000 cents, and then it's just additional of 30 attack, right? It should be 30%. So Talia's exclusive equipment gains arms made of ancient spirits. It has the power to defeat evil and the tenderness of the guardian of nature. So no wonder it's green. It has the power of nature. <laughs> so now before checking the skill preview, we are going to equip first the exclusive equipment just to see if there are any additional effects when we equip it. <laughs> so this is the basic attack or normal attack. It has some green light. You now, have no first skill. Your destiny is already you can ready. see the green stones there and it Promise forms a green glyph. So powerful. And then, second skill. Okay, she's wearing the rocks and jewels now. Saves the enemy and then it, uh, she crashes it. <laughs> so scary. And yet it really looks so nice. So those are the skill effects or skill animation of Talia. And we have the exclusive equipment equipped on her. Now we are just going to check if she has an orange fate core, which I think she doesn't have one yet. That's her only fate core for now. Gold fate core. And it's also a popular fate core or popular hero because Almost everyone who uses the Greenland Nation characters also uses Talia. No, I keep on picking some other... I'm just... Here we go again. Sorry about this, guys. I don't know what's happening with my mouse. Hey. <laughs> doesn't stop. Okay. So we're here. We're checking out the other... Orange fate course just to see if there's one for Talia, but I'm pretty sure there's none. Ah, keep on pressing, but we reach up to the end, so there's none. <laughs> now we are going to the Manage Heroes button, and you can see over here I have her. And I'm currently using Talia. In my Is green line, you've got? You've won team. the future. And I happen to fusion Talia's fate core to two, and also enhance her fate core, uh, fate core here, yeah, to plus eleven. And for the exclusive equipment, I don't have it yet, but instead I dyed the regular weapon into this color. 
I was supposed to change it really but I have this plan to make this look like or have the colors of a watermelon so the top part is going to be dark green while the lower part is going to be reddish. <laughs> and now for her artifact, I equip this one, San, uh, Sad Concerto Brendan. 50% chance to flick attacker with silence for 5 turns upon receiving damage. So if ever my Italia receives damage, there will be a 50% chance to afflict the attacker with silence for 5 turns. So I wanted something that's offensive, so I'm using this one. But you can use other artifacts. There's Living Melody Biryong, 40 per, uh, 44 per chance. Uh, <laughs> 44% chance to reset turn for a random ally upon receiving damage one time per round. 44% chance when your artifact is at level 21. And there's this Heavenly Harmony Harbon. Chance to grant 1 mana to ally with the highest attack at the start of battle. When an ally is resurrected, heals 1 ally with the highest attack among the targets by 10% of own max health and grants 1 mana to the target himself one time per round. Other than that, there's this Dimensional Herb Linen. Chance to cleanse 1 debuff from all back row allies and grant immunity for 5 turns if an ally afflicts a status effect which disables actions such as stun, modification sleep, by back row ally one time per... <laughs> I always confuse this as a sentence that continues but it stops right here <laughs> one time for two rounds then there's this church of purity helena chance to cleanse the buff one ally at the start of the turn that's also good wild wave allied chance to heal 14 percent of own health upon receiving damage one time per round Then for the purple artifacts, you have this Guardian of Balance Blinket. Increases on attack speed by 13. When ally receives damage, stacks up to 3 times. Okay, this is also good. There's Hammer of Destruction Collapse. Chance to afflict 1 random damage target with nullify buff for 4 turns. Oops, I'm about to equip it. So, there are a lot of artifacts to be honest and whenever we do hero spotlight you can observe or hear me repeat this over and over again let's say if i'm going to discuss about a certain support type hero again next time i am going to repeat this because actually we can use any of this for a particular hero so since we are talking about a support type hero such as talia you can see this artifact always shows up because whenever i think uh there was this update wherein whenever we choose an artifact the specific artifact for a specific type of hero is now showing up because before you can use uh before you we used to see attack type hero artifacts defense type hero artifacts and even chaos type attack chaos type character artifacts showing up here together with the support but now they just specifically filtered everything and show the specific artifact depending on what type of character we have so like for Talia again since she's a support type character we can only see support type artifacts here see up to the common grade one so no more other type of artifacts here. <laughs> These wordings are such a mouthful. <laughs> so those are the possible artifacts that we can equip on Talia. So when it comes to equipment, currently I put dash set combined with vitality set because I want her to be speedy because dash set again increases speed by 25%. So whenever I use Talia, since we have the battle in turn base, so I can see Talia somewhere in the middle of the queuing because you know, the characters and the enemies are queuing 
which one should be attacking first and stuff. So mostly the character with the highest attack, I mean attack speed, yep, is the one who's most likely to be attacking or moving first or the one who is going to cast their skill first. So I can see Italia somewhere in the middle so that's good because just in case I need someone to heal such as Talia. Therefore she's ready. And then Vitaly said this increases her health. So you can see if you're going to base from her skill. She has this, the second one. Heals all allies by 24% of own max health when attacking. So she can heal at the same time she attacks the enemy. So she deals 127% damage to the enemies and then she heals 24% of her own health. So if you want that 24% to be bigger in amount, the 24% amount, uh, you should increase her health. So I have effect increases here as the main option for the accessory because I want her or I want that my Talia to prevent herself from getting afflicted with status effects such as stun, modification, as much as possible. And then for the gloves, I have her in critical damage. Well, this is wrong. I actually want to change this to HP in percent as the main stat. And it seems that you can see that this gear is not good because you can see defense in whole number, HP in whole number, and attack in whole number. It doesn't make any sense and then, there, then there's critical damage it should be something in percent and then when it comes to the substats there should be hp defense effect resist and some attack speed so i okay now i remember i was trying to look for a better glove for talia and it seems that i don't have any yet so work in progress <laughs> and then you can see here, critical hit rate, effect hit, defense, HP, uh, not really that good. It's supposed to be HP more, some defense and effect resist. I want my Talia to be really tanky. And then for the boots, it's attack speed. So it's okay, you can use HP in percent also. And since I want my Talia to be speedy, therefore attack speed is okay. Then there's defense, HP, another HP line, but it's supposed to be in percent and effect hit. Well, effect hit, hmm, I think she doesn't need any effect hit based on her skill. Okay, she, so she has this debuffing here. 50% chance to decrease attack of target by 18% for 6 turns. Hmm, it's up to you if you want to make use of this, but I prefer not to this time. So effect hit at 67%, so this doesn't matter much but my effect resist is quite low 65 percent so instead of effect hit lines i should be looking for more effect resist lines in order for this to reach about 100 percent that would be good critical damage is decent 219 percent but since i don't want my talent to be a damage dealer well she can she can do okay because i can see my talia is also afflicting damage when it comes to her second skill but this is not really required critical hit rate not really attack speed this should be higher probably 250 but when it comes to hp i think this is already good because for hp and defense i'm not really quite sure what is the you know the threshold for making this really tanky i'm not even sure but i guess my italia is kind of strong Whenever there are lightning effects, you know, whenever you do 7 stunner and then you are battling for quite some time already, there's this lightning rounds and they are trying to kill your enemy and it seems my Talia can survive so far. So again, when it comes to... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when it comes to gloves, it should be something HP and then again, for all of the substats, these four lines, there should be something like HP, defense, effect resist for your Talia to be tanky and some attack speed or speed for the gloves. Okay, effect resist will do for the boots, speed or HP. And since Talia is a, a support type hero, 
don't forget the blue faith course that you're going to need is blue faith for kaya because blue faith for kaya she will be boosting all of your should i sing another one support type heroes she's going to give buffs because i'm just going to check godly voice i don't deserve such praise wait it doesn't say here so we can check the blue faith course over here for Blue Faith for Kaya, okay, it says here, grants buff to support type heroes. Any support type heroes, whether they are from different nation, as long as they are a support type hero, they're going to be, uh, they're going to receive increase of combat power and defense from Kaya. And since, uh, what they call this, Kaya is from Greenland, you also be needing Blue Faith for Aiden. Because Blue Fate for Aiden grants buff to heroes from Greenland. Increase of combat power, attack, HP, and defense. And don't forget, since he's from Greenland, you also need to max out batteries, signature force, in order for them, not only Talia, but for other Greenland characters, their buffs will be increased. You can see for every slot, there are corresponding buffs. You can see attack, defense, HP. And then more attack defense, defense and HP up to level 5. So that's quite big. And also, don't forget about the unleash potential in every hero. That will make your hero stronger. So that will be all guys. For today, we discussed about Talia, her possible artifacts, possible gears that we can equip on her. Also, aside from dash set and vitality, since she's up front, you might want to make use of more Vitality set, Fortification set, and Effect Resist set. So those are the possible gear sets that you can equip. And then we also discuss about different ways to make our Talia stronger. So please do not forget to subscribe to my Twitch channel and also for my YouTube channel as well where you can see all of my other Exos Heroes content and other games as well. And if you have any questions, just do drop a comment. And thank you so much guys for checking out my videos. I can see there are quite a lot of you who's watching my videos. And I want to suggest you subscribing to my channel if you really want to. That, that is if you really want to. So, in order for you to be updated with our other Exos Heroes video, and other games as well. This is very gaming. Have a nice day, everyone.